The community of chemistry graduate students asked me to talk a little bit about my own experiences with mental health in graduate school. Evidently, thinking that I am a halfway decent example of someone who's gone on to do okay, uh, having overcome some challenges. So I'm happy to do that because I think it's an important topic and it merits that kind of discussion. So I guess in an autobiographical vein, when I was in my third year of graduate school, which is really kind of the worst period, you know enough to know that things aren't going as well as you'd like them to, but maybe not enough yet to fix those things. But in any case, in addition to the challenge of the science, I had an uncle who died of AIDS, a grandmother who died of Alzheimer's disease, my father had a heart attack in his 40s and it sent my mother into a nervous breakdown that had her taking anti-anxiety medication so that she almost wasn't there, and my best friend in graduate school left to take a job. Um, so the combination of the weight of all those things uh, was was pretty tough, and I ended up uh, catching myself sobbing uncontrollably at my desk late at night after everybody else was gone, which seemed to be an indication, in addition to the copious amounts of alcohol I was drinking, that maybe it would be good to talk to a mental health professional. And I was lucky. I had access to a student uh, health service that did indeed have uh, counseling and other resources available. After chatting with someone, which I found to be helpful, they also prescribed some medication which, I have to be honest, I can't tell you if I feel like the medication worked or it didn't because it's hard to do a control experiment on yourself, but uh, I persisted in graduate school and took the medication for a while until I felt I didn't need it, which was a few months later because I was lucky enough to have fallen in love, to be perfectly frank. Um, but in any case, I ended up then finishing my PhD, went on to the rest of my career, the rest is history, I suppose, and I'm glad that I had the opportunity to take advantage of the therapy that was offered to me, both pharmaceutical as well as uh, discussion with professionals. I think it's important that people take advantage of those kinds of resources and not be lost to the system, not somehow believe that depression makes you any less worthy as a scientist or engineer or whatever uh, technical pursuit you're, you're going after in graduate school. Uh, I also think it's pretty important, coming back to science, I'll say one more thing, I guess, which is often when things are not going well in one's laboratory or office or whatever it is you do as a scientist, there's a tendency to conflate that with one's personal self-worth, if you will. And that's a, that's a dangerous thing to do. It, it shouldn't happen that way. Um, things proceed in, a, in sequences in science. Sometimes things are going well and sometimes they're not, and it just requires work to overcome those. Uh, it's not an indication that the individual is any better or worse, you just are persevering. And then maybe the last thing I'll, I'll say a little bit about is what I think are some good strategies for, um, for addressing mental health challenges that are not so severe that perhaps they require medical intervention, but you're just feeling anxious, uh, somewhat depressed, what, whatever the case might be. It's really important to get outside your laboratory, outside your office. Um, to have activities that allow you to turn off the stress. Um, athletic activities are great if you like to run or bike or play on team sports or what have you. It's a wonderful way to take care of a different aspect of your life that I think is really rewarding. Um, and community-based activities that involve interacting with people with similar interests, uh, whatever those might be, whether they be religious, social, uh, you name it all those things that can tie you in and uh, ensure that you feel that there's a support base, those are critically important too. And finally, if you do feel like you're experiencing some significant challenges, it's good to talk with a research advisor. Uh, and you know, every individual has to judge how much they want to disclose and uh, you know, how open one's boss, for lack of a better word, will be. Uh, but Usually it's better to communicate than not to communicate. I think uh, lack of communication can really increase stress levels and many faculty are not that unused to members of their research group experiencing mental health challenges and want to find ways to help individuals cope with that and succeed and get out the other end.